Hello! In this video I will demonstrate 10 benefits of managing your bill of materials using BOM Plus module of CAD Plus toolset. BOM Plus is a part of CAD Plus professional package and now available for download and purchase. Please follow the link in the description of this video for more information. One of the main benefits of BOM Plus is an ability to access bill of materials directly from Windows File Explorer and it does not require to have SOLIDWORKS installed, so it could be accessed by the users who do not have SOLIDWORKS on their machines. You still can collapse, expand BOM items, you can see the preview and pass to the file, and you can see all of the properties and quantities loaded as per your specified template. You can also access the same bill of materials information directly from SOLIDWORKS, including the assemblies opened in large design review mode. So like in this case, I'm opening this assembly in LDR mode and you can see I can access its bill of materials in exact same way using the menu command BOM plus view BOM. And now you can see that I can also switch between nodes and I can see all of the information loaded in the template. Bill of materials could be exported to several formats. This includes XML, Excel, CSV and JSON. XML could be your format of choice if you're looking to integrate the bill of materials into your ERP system, because exported XML file contains the tree in the indented format, so it's usually easier to import the multi-level bill of materials into your ERP system. As you can see here, you see all of the information about your BOM positions in a nicely formatted XML. BOM Plus provides advanced experience when it comes to reviewing or navigating your bill of materials. You can expand or collapse individual items, you can expand or collapse all items at once, you can hover your mouse over the item to see the path and also the preview of individual items in a bill of materials, like here, and you can also quickly navigate to the files in your Window Explorer. There are many advanced options you can employ in order to generate exact structure of the bill of materials which suits your requirements. One of those options is an ability to generate a flat BOM of your structure. Flat BOM will bring all of the items to a top level, correctly recalculating their actual quantity. Let me activate view BOM command and see the flat BOM of this assembly structure. So if I select a different template, which corresponds to flat BOM, you can see all of our items are now at the top level and all of their quantities are recalculated accordingly. As you can see, there are several items which are placed in their individual rows, despite having the same part number. This is because by default all the items are grouped by unique file and configuration. If you would want to group those items by part number, in SOLIDWORKS you have a workaround where you can group all of the row by configuration. You need to activate part configuration grouping option and display all configuration of the same part as one item. So as you can see, now those items are grouped. There are however few problems. The first one is all of our brackets assemblies have been grouped as one item with quantity of four. There are however two different types of brackets. One is a left-sided, one is a right-sided. And most likely those needs to be displayed as individual items. The second issue is our panel assembly. As you can see, those two panels have been grouped as one item with quantity of two, and all of their children have been listed as a sub-items in a bill of materials. For example, as per this bomb, we need 24 flat washers, so it's 12 multiplied by 2. But if you look closer to those tab assemblies, you can notice that those contain different number of holes, which means that the number of nuts, washers and bolts will be different. The reason is this particular panel will be sold as an item where the actual customer will need to drill those holes, so that's why this panel comes as single item number, but the tab assemblies would have a different number of sub rows. BOM Plus addresses that issue in a different way. It allows you to group items based on the column values. Let me create a couple of new templates which are going to group our BOM items based on the value of part number property. So first I need to activate browse template folder command which will open the folder in Windows File Explorer which has all of my templates. I'm just going to make a copy of flat and indented BOM. I'm going to rename this to a flat grouped and indented grouped. Now just double click to open the editor of this BOM template. 
and in here I can just select which column I want to use for grouping so in my case it's going to be part number I'm actually going to also deactivate the filter for assemblies so it's only going to show us a part items I can name the uh, bomb flat grouped I can do similar steps for my indented bomb so here I'm just going to select a name called indented grouped and group all of the items by part number custom property now I can save this and simply click reload button to load all of my updated templates now I can simply switch my template from the drop down to see the updated bill of materials so as you can see the item is grouped but there is a warning that there is a mismatch of column description for those rows and the reason is it's merged four rows of different types of parts so one is the left sided one is the right sided so let me just open that part and see uh, with the issue so if I open that part you will see there are two configurations in here and those configurations have different descriptions although they have the same part number so because those are actually different parts most likely I would want to assign different part number to those configurations so let's call it WB01L for left sided and WB01R for right sided. So now I have resolved the conflict and if I save my updates and open the bill of materials again those rows should not be grouped. And as you can see we now have two rows for WB01L and WB01R. Let me activate indented BOM template and see the result here. Now I want to quickly talk about a few more benefits of BOM Plus. The first one is an ability to dynamically switch between templates without the performance penalties. BOM Plus is going to cache and reuse the data across the templates, so it's much faster to switch between those templates. Another benefit is the template being self-contained, so it has all of the required information about filtering, what types of items you want to include, what types of items should be grouped and also what bill of materials type indented flat of top level so you can save all of this information within one template for easier access now let's talk a little bit about error handling in bomb plus in previous example we have a warning next to our item because the description custom property of merged items were different items were still merged because that conflict were considered as minor in this example, we can see the red flags next to each row, and you can see those items are not being merged. Let's hover the mouse over error items and find out the reason. So first one was not merged because there is a missing item between two merged items. And the reason for that is the sub parts of those items have a different configuration. So this one is WB01R, while another one is WB01L. So those cannot be merged safely. The second error is different and it indicates the different quantities of the children items. If you remember, we were discussing the issue where one of the sub-assemblies has six holes, another one is four holes. This was the reason why this bill of materials were not merged. Now it's up to the user to decide how to solve this conflict. You can change part number, you can remove the grouping of the columns, or you can just keep it as is. And the last but not least benefit of BOM Plus I want to highlight is an ability to insert a lightweight metadata to replace your hardware components and non-modeled items in your bill of materials. In our example, we are using several hardware components such as bolts, screws, nuts and washers in order to generate the accurate bill of materials. However, there is no simulation is performed of those models and the only reason those components are inserted is to get it in the bill of materials. This makes your model more busy and also generates more graphics triangles which affects the performance of your assembly. I have suppressed those components and I'm going to replace them with the items from BOM Plus library. This library can be managed by user and you can modify and assign any custom items and properties. At first I will insert bolt and I will need to select the hole I want to attach this bolt into. I can also use a multi-insert option to select multiple bolts at a time. Now I will select all of the six holes in my model in order to select six bolts at the same time. When I finished I'm going to click a push pin button because I'm going to insert another items for the same selection. 
and simply click a green tick on my property manager page. So as you can see, six items were inserted instantly. I can now change the item from my library and insert nuts to the same holes. And also I'm just going to insert watchers to the same holes. Now we can close our property manager page and activate the tab. And you can see all of our items appear in this tab. You can select them to see their definition. You can change, suppress or delete them. Now, if I open my view bill of materials, I should be able to see those items. I do not see them right now because my template does not have a filter to show items. So let me activate my items library and simply select the template I want to modify. Now I just need to check items filter and save the template. I will repeat the same steps for indented bill of materials template. Select items, save, close. Now I just need to reload my templates so I can see the updated bill of materials. Now let me just select this updated template and you can see all of the three items are appeared in my BOM. And in the same way I can export them to Excel, CSV, XML or JSON. Thank you for watching this video.